What's up guys, Mike at OCA here. Today I wanted to put a video together because I've got a lot of calls and texts and emails from people asking about night vision. First off, I uh, don't know what it's gonna cost you because it's across the board, but we can definitely put something together that is going to be budget friendly for you and still deliver really good quality most of the time it's going to be better than just about any box unit you can buy. So having said that, I figured I would just explain the parts to uh, night vision, in particular PBS 14 or monocular single tube devices. So to give a little bit of insight on it, monoculars of course are going to be for one eye and they can be used on either eye, your left or your right, and it can be used on your dominant eye or your non-dominant eye. It really depends on the application and what you plan to do with it. I am right eye dominant, and I actually run it on my right eye because I use it to not only look around, but also shoot through, and uh, it actually, I guess right-handed, I'm right-handed, so everything I do is easier using my right hand. So I kind of assumed that it would be easier using my right eye. Don't know how true that is, but after using it a few nights and really settling in and getting comfortable with it, uh, it's, it's kind of second nature at this point. I'm no operator when it comes to running night vision, but I can get around just fine. Having said that, PBS 14, single tube, got a basic couple parts. You've got, of course, your housing. Inside of your housing, you have your intensifier tube. Uh, outside of your housing and your tube, you have your front optic and your rear optic. So that's the basic gist of what you're gonna get when you buy a PBS 14. Some are gonna have manual gain and manual brightness where you're gonna be able to turn the brightness of the image you're seeing up or down to control the, the backsplash on your face of the, the green if you're using green phosphor or the white blue if you're using white phosphorus. Um, but it also helps in just really low light situation. If you're, if you're really needing to C, you can always cut it up a little bit brighter, but you know, if, if you've got pretty good light around and you, you don't like that, that backsplash all over your face or it's too bright, you actually have the ability to cut it down. You also have the capability on the front and the rear to adjust the optics so it's clear for you and you will get a little bit of difference when you're, when you're focusing on a target you know, right in front of your face, you know, from me to the camera. I can, I can see that just fine when I dial it in with my optic, but everything in the background is blurry to an extent. Or if I look in the, I'm looking out, you know, 25 yards, 50 yards, 100 yards, I can see that. But if I put my hand in front of it, it it's a little blurry. You know, you do lose that aspect, but it's, it's not really detrimental. You kind of get used to it and um, it's pretty quick and easy to adjust on the fly if need be. When you buy this, uh, you're also gonna have to buy a couple other parts. And I'm gonna be honest, they're not really cheap. Can you get something online, uh, maybe Amazon, something like that, that's gonna do the job for you? I mean, it might, but I like to say buy once, cry once. So if you're gonna do it, you might as well buy, you know, the best part you can afford. That would be my recommendation. The first part you're gonna need other than your PBS 14 is going to be a J-arm. What the J-arm is going to do is it is going to mount to your PBS 14 and it is going to give you the option where you can actually insert this PBS 14 and arm into a housing so it will receive it so it will mount and lock in place. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down real quick and show you that you can kind of see that this thing is very positionable. So when you're trying to install it, you actually, uh, you can get it pretty, pretty comfortable for you. The other thing it does is it allows you to run it on your right side or your left side. So you can run it right eye or left eye, regardless of dominant eye. So that's, that, that makes it a pretty neat feature. Once you get this, this piece right here is gonna run you anywhere from, oh, I don't know. You could probably find some inexpensive things, um, maybe some plastic uh, or some, I don't know, I don't wanna say knockoff, but uh, it's probably what it is. You could probably find something for about 50 bucks, 60 bucks. This one right here, uh, this guy right here runs about 150 bucks. Um, this is an AX14 Pro and it's from Noise Fighters. So that kind of gets you started. The next thing you're gonna need, I'll go ahead and say this one because I don't have it, but you can use like a Naroto's Rhino mount. Um, it's not as adjustable, but uh, it will get the job done. But pretty much the standard in the game is Wilcox. So this is a Wilcox mount, and what it does is this piece right here mounts to your helmet. This piece right here accepts the shoe on your PVS-14, or in the, if you're running, you know, dual tube, it will accept the shoe on that. And so this is the piece that mounts this device to your helmet. Again, buy once, cry once, but this piece right here is gonna run you, I mean, on a good day, brand new, you're gonna find it in the fours, most likely, uh, but you know, just go ahead and jot down 500 bucks for this piece. Um, it's well worth it, and it's, it's a necessity, so I think that's why they charge what they charge. So that's your third piece. You've got your PVS-14, you've got your J-arm, you've got your helmet mount. Now we'll talk about the helmet. There's a lot of different helmets out there. You can go with ballistic, you can go non-ballistic, which is called a bump helmet. There are ballistic helmets out there like Opscore, Gentex, Team Wendy. You know, you're gonna pay thousand, two thousand bucks there are other helmets out there, Hardhead Veterans, um, a couple others. They're less, you know, five, 600 bucks get you in the game. You can do your own research on that and figure out what best suits you, or you can go with a bump helmet. Some bump helmets start at around, you know, 200 bucks, and they go up to, you know, thousand bucks. This one right here is an Ops Core. It is a carbon fiber model. Um, it's, it's just what I went with. I didn't feel for what I'm using this setup for. I don't feel I need ballistic. And that's, that's just my thought on it. Um, you can run ballistic if you want. I have a ballistic. Don't run it. Uh, sometimes even question why I even had it. But, you know, that's for a different time. So on this helmet... You're going to have to have, most of them come with it, but you can buy them if they don't. You're going to have to have a helmet mount. What this helmet mount's going to do is it's going to allow the Wilcox mount or whatever mount you're using to interface and lock in. And then it's pretty much affixed. You can put it up for the storage of your night vision, or you can press the button and get it down so you can start to use it. You've got little tabs on the side that slide in and out, so you can get it as close to your eye as you need or as far away, of course, all limiting on the length of this rod. Um, that's pretty much it. 
Now, there is another knob on it that will control cant. You're not gonna really be able to see it much, but by twisting this knob right here, it is going to take this piece and it is going to cant it up or down. So it kind of better fits you, but I leave mine all the way down. I guess it's just how I roll um, as far as the setup goes. You may need it a different way. Another thing on this is counterweights. On a PVS-14, it's not too heavy, but if you're not used to it, putting, you know, a pound, we'll say with that and all of the mount and everything, putting a pound on the front of your head while also carrying a pound on top of your head, it's pretty light, but do it for 10 minutes and let me know how that works for you. Uh, it's going to start Feeling a little odd, um, you might be okay, but if it feels like the helmet's pressing down on your head too hard or you have a tendency to lean forward, counterweights are a good thing. So in this, you can open it up and you can see you've got all the different counterweights. They all come out and you can kind of weight it how you want. You can also keep this for backup batteries because this thing does run on battery. So having a couple right here might be a good idea if that's something you want to do. The last thing I put on there, and I always recommend it, is if you're out shooting or hiking or doing whatever, if you're out with your buddies and somebody else has night vision, good idea to get some sort of IR illuminator for the top of your helmet, just so you can see each other, because there will be times that you're not using your illuminator, so it's, it's nice to be able to know where your other people are. <laughs> That's all I'll really say about that, but back to this, slides right in, pretty simple. It's not coming out. So now you have the ability to drop it down and adjust it to your eye. You can do that the right side for your right eye. And like I said earlier, it will go over to this way for your left eye. Whichever way you get it, once you're comfortable, Go ahead and adjust for fitment and then for stability as well as safety because this is not a cheap piece of equipment you want bouncing around. Use the bungees and attach them. That way this guy does not move. Now you are set up and you are ready to start exploring, you know, the world of night vision on this. So once you get your PVS-14 and once you get your J-arm mount and you get your Wilcox mount and then you get your helmet, you are ready to go outside and start looking around. Um, as long as it's not super dark, as long as you've got some sort of light, whether it be stars, uh, moon, this thing is gonna work just fine. There is a built-in illuminator on it. It's pretty much a waste of time. It's good for, I don't know, reading a map, looking through a drawer or something, or, you know, trying to, I don't know, pull something out of your pocket and figure out if you got a you know, you know, see what you're looking at. I don't know, but it's not going to really help you look any further than five feet around you. So not to say you need anything, but this is a good first setup. When you're ready to build onto this setup, you're going to be able to go one of two ways. First way is going to be an illuminator. So it 
lights up even more and allows you to see more. Or your second way is go ahead and get an optic that is night vision compatible. It, it really doesn't matter which way you're going. It really depends on what you want to do. Um, so, you know, do what, do what you think's best on that. Definitely do a night vision rated optic while you can cut standard optics down to the lowest setting. It does work. Doesn't work as well. Um, yes, you can see through it. It is fuzzy. It is a little more blurry. So it's, it's, it will work in a pinch, but it's not recommended. Just, you know, again, buy once, cry once, do what you need to do. Um, you're probably not going to be able to use your standard optic anyway, because you're not going to be able to get the proper height. Um, put this on, shoulder this, look at your optic on a standard height. This thing is going to be banging all across your charging handle on the top of your rail. Uh, just, it's just not comfortable. It's not easy. So you're going to need to get an extended height rail, uh, or an extended height mount. Uh, this one's a Reptilla. Highly recommend them. Uh, 1.93 inch is the height that it raises it up. Take the old MRO mount off, put this one on. Super comfortable to look through. Uh, easy, uh, super comfortable. So that's what I recommend. You can do that with the EOTech. I also have the EXPS EOTech night vision. It, it works just as great. Just have to put it on a riser. You're not gonna be able to see. Well, I can't see, I can't get down that low. So maybe you can, but uh, I'll let you do your own research on that and figure out what you need. So there's your optic. Next is gonna be your illuminator. Illuminator's nothing but a flashlight for night vision. It's going to cast a beam of light that is only visible through your night vision devices. It is not visible to the naked eye. It's not visible to anything other than people wearing night vision devices. If you look directly into an illuminator, this is an illuminator. This is an illuminating flashlight. If you look directly in it, you will see a low glow of red light. This is a weapon mounted illuminator with IR pointer. When this is open, you will see low glow of a red ring. Even with the PBS 14, if you cut that illuminator on for map reading, you're gonna see a little bit of a red glow. Nothing crazy, but it's there. Talking back with this, this is a Steiner Optics. This is a D-Bow uh, D2. This is an IR illuminator, an IR pointer, as well as a daytime visible green dot pointer. I love this. Uh, I love this one as well as also the Steiner, what is it, the D-Bow A3. The only difference is the D-Bow A3 has a smaller illuminator. It's a little, it, honestly, it looks a little better, uh, but I don't, I don't really care about looks. The, the D2 has the brightest illuminator of any civilian illuminator. You can weapon mounted illuminator on the market right now. So that's what I run. Has nothing to do with how it looks. They both weigh about the same. Um, the IR pointer's about the same. The green laser's about the same comes with a quick disconnect. I mean, everything's the same other than this is a brighter one and they're the same price. So I'll let you pick which one you want, but if it's up to me and they're the same price, I don't care about looks. I want the brighter one. So this guy is gonna mount right on the front of your weapon, just like that. Plug in and it's ready to go. Pressure switch right here, and you're off and running. You have a bunch of different settings on the back of it. You can run just the laser for daytime, and it's got a high and low. Then you can run just the illuminator at night, and it's got a high and low. And then you can run the illuminator with pointer or designator, and that's got a high and low. Those are the only 
you know, there's six positions and that's pretty much how it runs. You will not be able to just do the IR pointer or IR designator by itself. This does twist just like a flashlight. So you can control your flood. You can make it a tight beam or you can actually flood the area. The tight beam, when it's fully closed, it's a really tight circle with a illuminated dot in the middle. It almost looks like the circle dot, like an EOTech uh, holographic site or something along those lines, a hollow sun, whatever you want to say. But um, that's kind of what it looks like. I'm going to put together a video later tonight when it gets dark. See if I can get this on camera. Also kind of show this off so you can kind of see what you get there. I guess saying all of that, that pretty much, I guess gets your feet wet on this. Um, if you have any questions, sorry if I've bounced around or sorry if I've, you know, didn't answer everything you had. If you have any questions, just shoot them to me. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, OCA USA, or you can check out our website. Everything is not on our website. There is so much stuff that we do not have on there. That's my fault. But if you're looking for something or have more questions about these things, just you know, shoot us an email. We will get back to you. Uh, websites, OCATN.com. And I think that's about it. Um, again, I'll put another video together and try to post these back to back. That way you've kind of got a part one and part two. And I guess that's it, man. Uh, thanks for watching. And again, let us know if you have any questions.